This video is powered by the pros at Pascal Air Plumbing and Electric. Arkansas owned, Arkansas operated. GoPascal.com. All right, let's shift gears, talk some baseball with Scott Tabor. Now, Scott is apparently in the woods right now. Scott, did you find a place as you're scouting for turkeys this morning on the youth hunt that you can talk to us okay? I can't tell you where I'm at, but, yeah, I've found, found some birds. If you listen real careful, you can hear some owls in the background and some turkeys gobbling down the hill from you. Yeah. Now, that's a guy that doesn't want to reveal us. Well, Lord knows, if you get, a, you get a good spot where some birds are at, you're not mm-hmm. telling us. In fact, you're going to tell them, and it's going to be, you know, 15 miles the other direction. Are fishermen or hunters more cautious about revealing their location when hunters. it comes to its hunters? Hunters, because you put a lot more work into it, right, Scott? Okay. Yeah, I'll tell you the worst about it is is wives. Oh, my gosh, look at this funny kill. I'm going to put it on Facebook and tell everybody. I go, no, 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 no. You don't do that. Yeah, no, <laughs> no socials. Well, we know uh, no Ole Miss bounced Arkansas out of the College World Series last year and went on to win the championship. Back-to-back Mississippi schools able to do that. And I know there's a lot of turnover from last year's team, Scott, but is there still some animosity? Is there still some tension about – how things ended last year for this baseball team and wanting to get back at the reps for what they did? I don't know if it's animosity or tension, but but I know we always like to beat Ole Miss in, in everything, in football and basketball and baseball. I, so I think if you were to try to find a rival for Arkansas, one that just happened, it would be Ole Miss. There's just something about them. Uh, you know, them in Texas, not as bad as Texas, but they're, they're getting there. All right, so... Obviously, you know, weather postponed and canceled last night's game. Doubleheader today. You know, Chuck and all, and me and Ty have talked about it all morning. You got the day night doubleheader. Uh, wh- what's your approach and, and what what are the what are the players dealing with today? You're, you've dealt with these before. Tell us what the players are thinking heading into a day that's going to be as long and that you got to endure when you got two games back to back on a day like today. You know, all these kids grew up playing a lot of baseball and they grew up playing double headers. Double headers are not a big deal. Uh, what is a big deal is if you, I'm glad they avoided it where you start a game and have to stop at a pitcher, you know, a starter gets warmed up, he goes out, he throws an inning or goes two. And then there's a two hour rain delay. And then I don't know to bring him back or they don't, uh, you know, whether putting back out there. So it's, it, those things are really, really tough. Dealing with double headers. Just, it's just a long day of baseball. Uh, you know, I always hate to say back in the day, but when we were, when I was playing, Every game, every series was a doubleheader. We played one on Friday and two on Saturday. Uh, and then during the during spring break, we played seven doubleheaders in a row. So you know, we get to park at eight, and we had to, we didn't have lights, so we had to be done by dark. So we start early and stay all day. It's not that big a deal. They'll bring some food and they'll have some snacks, and you know, their kids they'll sit around. They'll probably play some cards between the games and, and go out and get them the second game. Yeah. We we're talking about how difficult it was to sweep both ends of a of a day night doubleheader like this. Well, why is it so hard to build that momentum? Why is it hard to get the best of a team twice in in one day? A lot of it's momentum, depending on how the first game goes. Uh, you know how much emotional energy you've spent in the first game a little bit. You know, but then again, it always comes back down again who who the pitchers are, how the pitchers are throwing. Uh, if, uh, if the wind's blowing, the weather affects it a lot. It's a lot like golf. Uh, if the weather blows, the wind's blowing, it, it affects everything. Uh, hopefully the condition of the field will be good. But they, uh, they'll, they'll be up for it. You know, the Razorbacks are kind of on the roll, I think. They won two out of three. Even though they lost the first game last week, they came back and they played two good games, two good, solid baseball games, and, uh, and two, two out of three from Alabama. You had a week where your your midweek game got canceled. You were supposed to have played Arkansas State. Weather uh, forced the cancellation of that game. Does that does that concern you at all? Is it, has it taken them out of their rhythm of not having that? What what did you miss by not playing that game on Tuesday? Well, you do kind of get in a rhythm of playing every you know so many days, uh, having just a couple of days off before you have another game to get out there and compete against a, a pitcher from the other team. Uh, all the pitchers threw they threw bullpens and what have you, but. Uh, I'd like to have seen McLaughlin, you know, get another shot and get on the mound, and it, and it kind of takes away an opportunity for a, a young kid who has a great arm and, and hadn't quite put it together to get a start and do very, very well. You know, it's it's that's your shot to where they say, you know, he's got something they will use him this weekend. And so that's what really it just takes away. But they know who their kids are. Uh, it's just exposure more than anything else. So if they 
they showed last week though they'll dip deep into the bullpen and, and get a couple innings here and a couple innings there and they can put it all together we'll have a good good weekend Scott Tabor with us, former Razorback College World Series pitcher. Scott, I asked Dave in the offseason about recruiting against two schools that won back-to-back national championships. Now, SEC's littered with that. But I asked him if he thought it helped the SEC West in terms of recruiting and it hurt. He gave me an interesting answer. When you're going up against teams like this this weekend, as you'll go up in Swayze and you'll go up in Duty Noble in the coming weeks, I mean – how much do players in the high school ranks and recruits take out of the fact that, hey, you might have been the defending national champion or you beat a national champion from a couple of years ago? How much do they pay attention to stuff like that? I don't think kids, you know, if you won a national championship three out of every four years, uh, you'd have kids knocking your doors down and wanting to be part of that. Arkansas is a program that were always knocking on the door. They hadn't quite kicked the door down yet. Uh, and, and can see that and see that consistently you're in the College World Series because if you get to the World Series, it's like getting to the to March Madness. You, you know, you have a chance, and you can see what Ole Miss did last year. They barely got in. They went on a bad roll, but they had the talent. And so, talented kids want to go to whole high profile schools with great facilities. Arkansas is that place. There's no place better in, in the United States. Uh, and but there's a lot of kids. There's a lot of very very talented kids out there, and, and there's a place for everybody. Uh, you just have to get on the right ones at the right time. I know LSU got bounced by South Carolina last night, but they have been deadly so far this year. Based on what you've seen in the SEC baseball you watched, are, are they far ahead of everyone, or have they just gotten off to a hot start and might level off a little bit in conference play? They're not far ahead of everyone. You know, they've got the Skeens kid. Uh, who is he's, he's the cream of the crop. Uh, they've got some really, really good hitters. But everybody's got some really, really good hitters. You look at that Auburn lineup, you know, we bounced in three games. But they have some great hitters. And so there's no weeks off in the SEC. Uh, There's no hitters off as a pitcher. You can't say, oh, I got seven, eight, nine coming up. I'll just lob it up there and let them hit it somewhere. Uh, You know, every every out is a grind, and it should be. That's why you play in the SEC. You want to face the best competition you can and play on the best teams you can. Uh, people look at Arkansas and they and they they see a really really gut, good tough team. So from the outside looking in, I mean you, you know in football you can say well you got Vanderbilt so and so Vanderbilt's good in baseball. Uh, so it, it's it's tough up and down the league. Uh, I, I think LSU LSU has got the, the talent. Uh, Arkansas has got the talent. I think pretty much every team in the SEC has got the talent. It depends all comes down to good pitching and timely hitting. <laughs> Good recipe, huh, Chuck? Well, the thing that I notice right now is, you know, you got four teams in the East that are eight and two or better. I mean, we're talking about, you know, and and I I understand the question, but we're talking about as LSU separated themselves. Well, no, I no. mean, my gosh, no. no, they're six and four in the SEC. They're not the best team in the league right now. I mean, Vanderbilt's ten and zero. Oh. You know, you got Kentucky and South Carolina with one loss apiece. You got Florida at eight and two. But no disrespect to LSU, they're a great team. But to say that they're the best team in the SEC right now, that's that's just not true. It gets back to the fact that you're only as good as your statistics stay you are, say you are, as your record says you are. So you can be, you can win the SEC, and people will still look at you and go, "Well, LSU's better." No, no, they're not. No, they're not. We're number one. Uh, and so it gets down to that, and, and like we talk about, that's just proceeding, you know, and you hate to say that, uh, and, but our program is to that point where we're playing proceeding. You know, we, we want to win the SEC, even if you win that's the right. SEC, you're going to have a good seed, and you want the best seed to get the best chance for a regional and to host a super regional. And so last year we didn't have that, and it's a, a little bit more of a struggle. You can still play good baseball on the road. You can still play great baseball on the road. Yeah. Uh, it just... You know, it's better at home. You won all that, but as Ole Miss proved last year, you don't have to have all that to do well in Omaha. Exactly, exactly. When we went to the World Series, we were just so happy to get in that large bid, and we went and played every. We went to Tallahassee, and then we went wherever they sent us. Uh, it's still baseball. You know, the, the, the mound's 60 feet, 6 inches, and, and the, still got to pitch it, still got to throw it, still got to hit it. So it's uh, it's, it's just baseball. But you're playing for seedings, and you, it's great when your program gets to that point where that's what you're looking at. How high will we be seeded to get a regional? 
and to get a super regional. It's not, oh, gosh, I hope we can get to a regional this year. You know, there are going to be those years, and, and those years happen generally because of uh, because of injuries. You know, if you have a lot of key injuries, and we've got a lot, and they've done a very, very good job of, of working around that and trying to find different pieces to stick in there until we get some guys back. So uh, the baseball is a fluid, fluid game. The season changes. It can change on a dime. All right, well, Taves, we'll do it next Friday. Hopefully we're talking about a series win over Ole Miss and getting ready for a, a highly anticipated weekend with Tennessee that begins next Friday night with a late, kind of a late start at 7 p.m. So uh, I know everybody's amped up and looking forward to next weekend. For you, it's turkey season. For a lot of people, it's Tennessee coming to town. But <laughs> need to win a series, need to win a series um, this weekend on the road first. I think we uh, feel pretty good about it, so I look forward to it. Get analysis of every play, prop, and point at Bet Online. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to sign up and receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Be sure to use our promo code BELIEVE to receive your bonus. That's B L E A V. BetOnline.ag, where the game starts.